married. I am from Tenberry, and uh, I'm the general coordinator for a US-based company called UB. And uh, we are a company who offers business and technology strategy consulting to companies. And we empower your businesses with professionally developed applications. And uh, amongst that, we have some products. One of our products is called Tahir. And in Tahir, we empower uh, women to see a community of women who shine like Esther in the Bible. And uh, we envision women who are not only groomed, but are also confident, capable of making a positive impact in society. And through our guidance, we aspire to create a network of women who lead with grace, intelligence, and beauty. At Tahir uh, Women's Center, we believe in the transform transformative power of health, wellness, beauty, and intelligence. And that's what Tahir Women Club is all about. So we will start our discussions from here, uh, focusing on the book, because we know most of us have read this book, and the, the, there must be something that has impacted us throughout this session into our ministries and we want to carry it back home. So I will start with the first question. In this book, Sami Spit talked about some common mistakes women make in trying to find acceptance and purpose in society. So I will give um, the room for the panelists, someone to point out what are these common mistakes and these mistakes were found in chapter two. So I want us to observe, somebody just give us part of these mistakes that women find commonly in society. Can somebody take the mic? Good afternoon, families. Um, again, I'm very happy to be here. Like I started saying, going through this book, it has actually been a journey that was very exciting because this book I have gained a lot and um, one of the things that I have learned as an error, as a mistake that women try to do in the society is women try to compare themselves with others. Women forget that there is a potential in them that they need to bring out. There is something inbuilt in them that if they want to compare themselves, they should compare themselves to themselves to be able to come up with that which God has put in them that will be able to effect a positive change in the society. Or rather, they want to be validated by some people, they want to be validated by some, um, by some, uh, by some entities. They compare themselves to colors, they compare themselves to background, they compare themselves to successes. But that is not what we are supposed to do as women. As women, you know the journey of life is on each and every one's corridor. You are not supposed to run on some other person's corridor because what she has achieved in her 40s, another one can achieve in her 50s, and another one will achieve even in her 30s. So when we want to work with God, you should be able to know that the journey of life is for each and every person and that God has a time for each and every one. And there is a time for each and everything because the Bible tells us that I have a plan for you, a plan to prosper you. So when you are a child of God, there's no need to compare yourself Thank to Thank you other. very much. Thank you very much, Reverend Gladys. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Can somebody else uh, say something? Ok, euh, je vais aller en français et je veux me référer dans le chapitre 2 du, du livre qui, n'est-ce pas, m'a beaucoup captivé, qui parle, n'est-ce pas, d'ignorer euh, son appel inné et sa passion. Parce que beaucoup de femmes, n'est-ce pas, euh, ont tendance à oublier qu'elles ont un appel. Et cet appel-là, c'est inné. C'est comme, comme si nous sommes nés avec, en fait. Et nous devons juste grandir pour les développer. Et nous avons cette tendance à poursuivre. Vois, elle a souligné un point très important. Nous avons des poursuites sociétales, nous avons des poursuites, n'est-ce pas. Et il y a trop de distractions, en fait. Et les femmes se focalisent sur... Euh, des futilités, si je dois mettre les mots comme ça, que de développer la passion. En fait, quelle est la passion de la femme Moi, je suis passionnée par le stylisme. Je le dis toujours, je ne suis jamais assise quelque part pour apprendre le stylisme, mais je confectionne les robes de mariage. 
C'est pour dire que lorsque tu découvres la passion, et j'aime bien le point qu'elle a souligné, quand tu découvres la passion, et c'est, n'est-ce pas, accompagné de la volonté et de la crainte de Dieu, là tu peux faire tellement d'espoir que tu ne peux même imaginer. Et je pense que découvrir la passion innée, et découvrir, n'est-ce pas, ton potentiel caché en tant que femme, cela va vraiment te booster et t'empêcher, n'est-ce pas, des rivalités qui ne servent à rien. Je pense bien que c'est très important. Merci beaucoup, vous avez bien expliqué ce point. Um, actually, she has, she has actually said a lot of what I wanted to say. But you know, one thing that really strikes me about this chapter is that when you talk about the, all those points, you see how connected they are one to another. Why do women um, want to seek validation from society? Because they are comparing themselves with other women or comparing themselves with the standards that society has set. Because if I discover my own gifts and my callings, my purpose, then I'm going to stick to it. But because society says that this is how um, a model should be, this is how a woman should be, this is a color, that is your skin color, that is beautiful. You know, women get into all kinds of things just because they want to find, to, to fit in what society has, you know, defined for them. And so, of course, they ignore what God has actually carved out for them as individuals. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Et en français, en résumé, elle a dit en faisant confiance à Dieu et à ses conseils et ses dispositions, les femmes peuvent éviter les erreurs courantes et découvrir leur véritable identité et leur véritable objectif en Dieu. Et elle a fait cette conclusion en chapitre 2. Donc nous allons aller dans le, le prochain point. Le prochain point euh, où je vais poser la question également dans le chapitre 3. Est-ce que Salis Fett nous a raconté son expérience sur la façon dont elle a fait face aux défis Nous aimerons savoir du Père de, de nos invités ce soir, qu'avez-vous appris de ces conseils pratiques Alors, j'aimerais euh, réitérer justement ces points, mais en ajoutant aussi un peu quelque chose qu'elle a dû citer, parce que là, elle a dit, elle a connu des souffrances des énormes souffrances qui a produit en elle la persévérance. J'irai un peu plus loin en disant, quand la souffrance produit derrière la persévérance, il faut encore supporter pour que ça produise en toi l'endurance. Parce que les anglophones disent, « After suffering comes perseverance, now long suffering. » C'est comme si, quand tu auras persévéré, il faut encore endurer. Donc j'ajoute ce mot « l'endurance ». Donc, dans ces conseils pratiques, c'est que on est tous, on fait face à des défis, mais on ne jette pas l'éponge. On ne jette pas facilement l'éponge. On se dit, c'était prévu, donc je dois juste exercer ce fruit de l'esprit qui est l'endurance. Merci. Merci. Une autre personne, s'il vous plaît. Ok. Alors, je pense que l'un des deuxièmes éléments qui a été abordé, qui est assez intéressant, c'est la question de faire confiance à Dieu et surtout faire confiance au temps et aux saisons, ce qu'elle a appelé le calendrier de Dieu. Je pense que en réalité, euh, chacun de nous, quand on parle de voyage, de foi, de parcours de foi, de destinée, de marche vers un but, il y a toujours des étapes. C'est très important de prendre en considération que dans tout ce que l'on fait, même lorsque le Seigneur a eu à créer la terre, il l'a fait sur la base d'un certain processus. Ça s'est fait en un certain nombre de jours, il n'a pas tout fait au même moment. Ça veut dire que nous aussi, dans notre voyage de vie, dans notre voyage de foi, on doit prendre en considération le fait que le Seigneur agit avec nous selon un calendrier que lui a défini, qu'on n'a peut-être pas toujours en visibilité, dont on ne connaît peut-être pas toujours les contours, mais c'est la confiance et la foi que l'on va baser sur le fait que Dieu est capable de faire pour nous des choses merveilleuses, sur le fait qu'il a pour nous des projets de paix, un avenir plein d'espérance. C'est sur cette base-là qu'on va pouvoir se fixer sur le calendrier de Dieu, garder la foi et continuer à avancer malgré les les difficultés, les échecs et les moments difficiles. Thank you very much, someone has Okay, just to add, um, another thing that she points out from the book is the fact that we need to seek support and encouragement from others. Um, you know, this point for me is very important because a lot of people, especially in this part of um, the world that is in Africa, we don't talk about our problems. A lot of people don't talk about it. And so, 
Thank you very much. A lot of women are dying inside because they don't want to talk about their problems. They don't want to find solution. And you hear somebody will give a silly reason like, okay, I shared my problems and before I knew it, everybody was talking about it. Who cares if everybody is talking about it? The person who takes your problems and talks about it makes themselves a fool because they should actually understand that you're going through something and you, you need support. And so um, people should actually learn to seek support, you know, to seek encouragement. Because if you don't, people die silently. You just hear that somebody died in their sleep. They have gone through a lot and they internalized it so much so that one day they just could not bear it and then they just gave it up. So it's very, it's a, for me it's a very important point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Je suis juste un peu pour ajouter un peu à ce qu'elle a dit. En anglais, on dit les problèmes chers is half, half, half. Je veux dire, tu as parcouru mille chemins quand tu as partagé ton histoire. Et quand nous voyons la sœur faite, nous voyons des marraines qui l'accompagnent. Je pense que ça revêt juste le fait qu'elle a considéré des mentors dans sa vie. Il y a des gens qui évoluent seuls sans avoir des représentants, des modèles devant de toi à qui tu peux te déverser, partager ton problème, que au moins tu es déjà la solution en moitié. Donc c'est ce que je voulais ajouter. Et ayons des mentors. Merci. Thank you very much. Uh, please, this very point provokes me to talk now, <laughs> because I I know many women that have died because they are afraid of what will people say. Les caméras, je voulais voir les têtes des gens qui sont là-bas, mais ça va. Il n'y a pas de problème, oui, pardon, fais un peu. Parce que, you are very important, ok? Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. This is an important point. Any woman in this place, carry this message to your sisters, especially us that are speaking in tongues. It is like when we get into it, we are sure our wisdom evaporates. It, ev that's, it, it evaporates. Please, you are still a normal human being with emotions and with feelings. And I have seen uh, Sister Komi Musa in the hall. I know she will say, Komi Musa is one of the people, one of the women who also advocate for women, especially disabled women. I mean, she has an important role she's playing. I mean, do you know what it means to make a woman that is disabled to feel comfortable? Because she's already knowing that she's not fit in the society. Many of us are like that. We are even whole. But we have problems and we hide those problems. We die with our problems. What about sharing? If you don't want to share them, I mean, wave them away. Wave them away and keep going. Okay? Wave them and keep going. You don't want to share them with Macorish. You don't want to share them with Barry. You want to share them with Olive. You think that they'll talk. By speak to your, encourage yourself in the Lord like David did. Encourage yourself and rise with the with the, with the, with the, how do I put, with the, with the lion that is in you. Each woman has something that is different. You just need to know that there is a dynamite lion dormant in you. The moment you discover that your life will never be the same again. Most women are so, uh, how do I put, timid, capricious. They think that being quiet is humility. It's not humility. It is not. It's fake humility. Some of us fake humility. I mean, reality, God is not a God of timidity. God is a God that wants you to express what he has placed in you. Most of us are here. Our nation is going through struggles. So when you are lying down with visions God has dropped in you, you are afraid to take a bold step and deliver your community around you and deliver a sister around you and deliver the nation. You want to stay in the comfort zone. You are staying in the comfort zone. Why? You are a woman. A woman has double capacity. The enemy needs a woman to succeed, and God himself needs a woman to succeed. I'm coming back. Thank you very much for your faith. 